This is the Paul McGuire Report. I'm Paul McGuire. On today's program, we're going to talk about the discerning of spirits and how you can exercise spiritual discernment and not be deceived. Now, as simple as a matter as that seems, it's really not that simple of a matter. Because among uh, those people who call themselves Christians or the body of Christ in America and around the world, Uh, there is a tremendous amount of spiritual deception going on. And the reason there's a tremendous amount of spiritual deception going on is because people are accepting ideas, teachings, theologies, beliefs, uh, stories, accounts, all kinds of things into their lives. Then they're basing their lives upon them. And they uh, aren't... uh, bothering to seek the Lord and to see if these things are from the Lord or not. So, for example, in 1 Corinthians 12, verses 7 to 10, it says, But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the not to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. Now here the Apostle Paul is talking about what is commonly known in the Bible as the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And the gifts of the Holy Spirit are are listed here. And um, we see what they are. So, for example, uh, the Bible distinguishes between a word of wisdom and a word of knowledge. Now, both the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge are supernatural manifestations of the Holy Spirit. They are not... um, just somebody speaking to you based on their own human perception, intellect, education, or observation. That may play a part of it, but what's really happening is if, and that's a big question, if someone uh, who has been called supernaturally into the office of ministry or someone who has a proven track record of being a mature, mature Christian Um, if they claim to have a, quote, word uh, for you, if if you're to go by the the Bible, um, there are two types of of words, the, the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge. And they both come, if they're from God, they both come from the Holy Spirit. Now, we shouldn't shut ourselves off from those things. In other words, just because there is misuse and abuse in this area, and there certainly is, by the way. I mean, make, make no mistake about it. There, there is abuse and misuse in this area. But that doesn't mean, in my opinion, there's others who disagree with me, that the gifts of the Holy Spirit went away. It simply means that We're in the latter part of the last days. The Bible warns about apostasy and spiritual deception. And many people who claim to be operating in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the truth of the matter is that they are being motivated by a spirit, but it's not the Holy Spirit. And that's the point. Now, um, the Holy Spirit also, in the category of the gifts of the Spirit, produces supernatural faith. Now, supernatural faith is when God gives you, supernaturally, he deposits a level of faith in you that transcends your normal level of faith exponentially. For some unexplainable reason, you're no longer praying like the same man and woman. You all of a sudden are empowered from on high to believe God, to petition God, and to ask God to answer a prayer, and you have an inner confidence that what you pray is going to happen. Now, that's a gift 
of faith, where all of a sudden the level of your ability to believe God for a answer in prayer just goes way up. And it's not something, you know, you, you whip yourself up into an, a psychological state or something. It just happens, and it happens by the Spirit of God. Now, I don't really like to talk about my own gifts in the Spirit because, you know, it, it comes off like bragging, and that's not my purpose. But I will bring it up for illustrative purposes. I walked uh, for many years with the Lord, have walked for, with many years for the Lord, and um, there have been times in my life where, you know, usually I'm praying, um, and I'm praying um, at, at a particular level of faith. But every once in a while, this uh, supernatural faith will come upon me. And I know it's a gift of the Holy Spirit in operation where I will have this both supernatural and rock-solid supernatural ability to believe God and to ask God to do things not only in my own life and family, but for those people who come uh, to me in ministry and who need prayer, all of a sudden I find myself being given the supernatural ability to believe him for things on a far, far high, higher level than, than I normally could do. That's the gift of faith in operation. And when I pray those prayers in faith, I'm not wavering. I'm not doubting. I'm believing God for the impossible. And I can just tell you that it's not coming from me. It's not coming from me because I, I normally, as a human being, can't walk around and uh, continually operate in that level of faith. It's a gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, you have numerous gifts of the Holy Spirit. God isn't stingy. I've never met one person who has just one gift in the Holy Spirit. God has given all true believers in Jesus Christ uh, gifts of the Holy Spirit. He's also given you natural talents and abilities. And many times when God gives you natural talents and abilities, he anoints them and empowers them through his spirit. So you may have this supernatural uh, multiplication and amplification of your natural talents and abilities. And then it says, to another, gifts of healings. Now, Again, there are a lot of people, and I totally understand their perspective. There has been such a widespread exploitation, such a widespread misuse and abuse of uh, the gifts of healing, um, and, and many times in the ministry, people who say that they are ministers called by Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not here to, to judge whether this minister or that minister has been called by Jesus Christ, but I, can, but, I can, but I can say this, and it's a different perspective than some people would have, and that is there may be uh, a fair number of people who the Lord really has called into ministry and a fair number of people who do, in actuality, have gifts of healing um, by the Holy Spirit, but the problem is they have not allowed the Lord to develop their character. They have not allowed the Lord to develop their personality and their ministry. Therefore, even though they've been given the gift of the Holy Spirit in terms of healing, they are, in a sense, embarrassing God, and they are not good stewards of the gift because they kind of merchandise it and exploit it and, and uh, they don't uh, function in that gift with wisdom. Now, th that doesn't mean God will not work through their uh, gift of healing and people uh, will be miraculously healed. But they cause a lot of miscommunication and a, a lot of unbelief a lot, and they cause a lot of stumbling uh, they cause a lot of people to doubt that God is really real, that the Christian God is real, and they're going to be held accountable for it at the judgment seat of Christ. Now, another um, gift by the whole, of the Holy Spirit is the working of miracles. And this is when the Holy Spirit 
gives you a supernatural amplification of your ability to pray and ask God to do something that normally you couldn't do. So you can ask God and you just know that you know that you know in your inner man or inner woman that when you pray, somebody's going to experience, maybe you, maybe you're praying for somebody else, supernatural provision uh, financially or a job or physical healing or answers to prayer or a husband or a wife or uh, a miraculous um, um healing in a marriage and just could go on and on but when you pray those prayers for miracles at that moment and this isn't we're not we have to distinguish between a heightened emotional state see many christians confuse um a legitimate gift of the holy spirit is not necessarily and often is not the same as a heightened emotional state. In other words, just because you're experiencing uh, a heightened emotional state of like positivism and joy and expectancy and you're kind of giddy and you, you know, that does not in and of itself indicate that you are operating in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. All that indicates really is that you're in a heightened emotional state and feeling rather blissful or whatever. But that has nothing to do with whether or not you uh, are operating in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It can, but you don't measure the validity of the gifts of the Holy Spirit by heightened emotional states. You measure the validity of the gifts of the Holy Spirit by one thing and one thing only. And I believe every believer should stencil it on their forehead, but I can't say that because then um, there's always somebody who will write me an email saying, <laughs> I've told people to put the mark of the beast on their forehead. And obviously I'm not going to say that. But when you deal in public ministry, you, those are the kinds of questions you get. So no, that was a sarcastic mark. I'm not telling you to stencil on your forehead anything because if the Antichrist happens to put the mark of the beast <clears throat> along with a tattoo on your forehead or your right hand, you're going to be in big trouble. Okay. The working of miracles to another prophecy. Now, let's talk about prophecy. This is important. Um, The Lord has given me numerous gifts in the Holy Spirit, as He has most of His believer, uh, uh, most believers. And the Lord, who calls most believers into ministry, when it's the Lord that calls you into ministry, you are often give, given um, uh, numerous gifts of the Holy Spirit, as well as wisdom to be a leader, etc. Now, I want to stress something here, because there's a great deal of confusion in this area, and it needs to be straightened out. So, one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is prophecy. Now, this works hand-in-hand hand with a word of wisdom and a word of knowledge. The Lord has given me a prophetic ministry. The Lord has given me uh, this spiritual gift of prophecy. The Lord anoints and blesses my research, my studying, my prayer, and the, and the Lord reveals things to me prophetically on a regular basis, and there's a, a high track record of reliability. Um, that comes from uh, a combination of being prepared humanly, doing my homework humanly, spending years of studying and researching and paying a price, um, but it also comes from the supernatural gift of the Holy Spirit. But I don't believe that this reference, and this is where there's a lot of confusion in the body of Christ, when, when in 1 Corinthians 12, 7 to 10, we read an outline of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, when it talks about prophecy, the prophecy that is being discussed here is not the same level and quality of prophecy that God gave the ancient Hebrew prophets like Jeremiah and Joel and Isaiah and 
uh, so many other prophets. And the reason we know that is the level, the extent, the power, and the magnitude of the supernatural revelation that was given to Daniel and Isaiah and Ezekiel, etc., was way, way beyond uh, what is implied in this passage of Scripture as the Holy Spirit giving you a gift of prophecy. And I want to make that clear, because many Christians in their theological interpretation, they blend these two together. They blend the Old Testament call uh, to be a prophet with the New Testament reference here in 1 Corinthians 12, 7 to 10 about a gift of the Holy Spirit called prophecy. They blend the two together. Those are two different things. They are two levels of callings. They imply two completely different levels of responsibility. And the accountability uh, for these prophetic gifts are totally different. So, for example, Daniel, you know, was given a vision of the four great Gentile world empires and a time and a prophetic timeline of human history, uh, starting in the ancient kingdom kingdom of Babylon, uh, ending with the Roman Empire, predicting the coming of the revived Roman Empire, the Antichrist, the false prophet. Uh, and the end of days, and the abomination of desolation. And Daniel paid a very, very intense and severe price as God molded him and shaped him to be a a prophet. But he was, let's just call it, a far higher level prophet than ordinary Christians or even ordinary ministries who just happened to be used by God Um, and are operating in the Holy Spirit gift of prophecy. These are two different levels of prophecy. One is like a mantle of prophetic leadership at a very high level, and the other is a more everyday prophecy. And the two should not be confused. Just because you have the gift of prophecy doesn't mean you've been called supernaturally uh, to, to be given a dream to interpret the destiny of America or something. Now, this is important because in the Old Testament there was a very strict standard if you claim to be a prophet, and that's a very foolish thing to do, uh, and you were wrong in any of your prophecies, you were stoned to death. Daniel and Ezekiel and Joel, their prophecies have been accurate for thousands and thousands of years. So, we're talking about two different types of prophecy. So yes, God uses me, for example, in prophetic ministry, Bible prophecy ministry. I touch on world events, etc. But I defer from labeling myself a prophet in the manner of Joel or Ezekiel or Daniel, etc. Now, there are people, there are many people who call me a prophet. Uh, oftentimes I will um, offer a disclaimer. Um, however, when you're in public ministry, it's not a matter of being immodest. It's just simply a matter of, you know, you're on a television show here, you're on a radio program there, and you, you can't continually, people are, they're, they're not trying to puff you up. Many times they're, they're, well-known Christian leaders, and they simply want to validate your ministry. So, you know, I'm I'm not going to sit there and uh, get into arguments with them, but in terms of how I label myself, I try to be very careful, because the penalty for making a false prophecy in the Old Testament was to be stoned to death. And on the other hand, I have a concern, well, I have two concerns regarding the contemporary spiritual environment that we live in, On one hand, we have millions and millions of Christians who, who I hope, are born again. Um, When you're born again, the Spirit of God takes up residence in your inner man or woman. But I see a tremendous amount of unbelief, 
a tremendous amount of uh, a lack of reliance on the Word of God, and I see an ever-shrinking, moment-by-moment, supernatural walk with Jesus in which the ordinary believer is allowing the, the power of the Holy Spirit to move through their lives freshly on a daily basis. That's the biggest danger we have today. The biggest danger we have today is that the modern church and many of the modern church leaders in, in Christianity are attempting to substitute the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit with psychological humanism, psychological theories, and psychological motivational teachings. Now, many of you know, who listen to the Paul McGuire Report, that I will often delve into these cutting-edge uh, areas of scientific research. But I want to go out of my way, because there are people who, who are intellectually shallow. I don't mean that to be arrogant. It's just that they haven't done their homework. They make uh, um, um, they don't make valid assessments, and therefore you have to be very careful to define what you're saying, because they, they're shallow in their analysis. Now, on one hand, I recognize that there is a uh, a potential danger if we're going to exalt the psychological teachings of man, uh, whether it's motivation, flow states, peak performance, and de-emphasize the Word of God, prayer, uh, the power of the Holy Spirit, and renewing our mind with the Word of God. Because what can happen there, if you're not careful, is that you're very subtly switching gods. You're starting to worship man and man's humanistic theories over the infinite personal living God of the universe, the God of the Bible. And my teaching, as many of you know, is always centered on the infinite personal living God of the universe in the Bible and on God's supernatural power. But having said that, even though I am concerned that many pastors and many Christians and many churches are relying strictly on secular humanism or humanistic uh, psychological or neuroscientific um, principles, there can be um, a degree of um, breakthrough in that. But ultimately, the Church of Jesus Christ was birthed out of a supernatural, miraculous phenomenon. And that was that when Jesus Christ was slain before the foundation of the world to be here for such a time as this, he took the penalty of every one of our sins upon himself on the cross, and he was murdered on the cross as a sacrificial lamb. And when he took the penalty for each one of our sins, it made it possible for a new and living way to be opened up where all true believers can now come boldly to the throne of grace, based on the blood of Jesus, put their faith in Christ to forgive them and save them, invite Christ into their life to make them born again, and they become new creatures in Christ Jesus. They become born again, and they are. They're supernaturally born again. They will get a brand new glorified body, and they will be taken up into heaven to live with Christ forever and ever. All of that is supernatural. It's all based on the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. There's no amount of flow states, there's no amount of psychological theories that can substitute for that. And we we see an increasing danger in the church where there's a rejection of the most powerful truths in the Bible, uh, for the um, uh, teachings uh, psychologically or neuro, uh, and through neuroscience of man. It's not that neuroscience and the psychological teachings of man, when it doesn't become a religion, are not valid. They can be valid if, if they're taught in their proper place. But if you're not careful, you can very subtly end up switching gods and switching what you believe in. So we have two dangers. We have this uh, 
inculcated unbelief on the part of many Christians who ref- do not read the, the, the supernatural word of God. They do not allow their minds to be renewed with the word of God. They're not relying by faith in the supernatural power of God. They're not walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. They're not filled with the Holy Spirit. And many of them are not born again. That's the greatest danger. But now, to a lesser degree, we have the danger of this, and that is there is a certain percentage of those Christians who claim to be operating supernaturally, who claim to be operating by the supernatural gifts of the Holy Spirit, who claim to have words of wisdom and words of knowledge, who claim to have uh, healings and miracles and prophetic gifts, but in reality the supernatural experiences that they claim are from the Lord um, are not resonating accurately. When you see them prophesy, when you see them minister, something's off. Now, what's off, it comes down to two things. It's off because they are not trained, they, they don't have enough of the Word of God in them, And therefore, what they end up doing with what they've been given is off balance. Or in some cases, they are, without realizing it, because they don't know the Word of God, they have opened themselves up to demonic spirits and occultic spirits, which are counterfeiting, they're counterfeiting the legitimate gifts of the Holy Spirit, such as prophecy and healing and miracles, and discerning of spirits, and words of wisdom, and words of knowledge. So I hope I was succinct in, in, in illustrating for you the two potential dangers. Now, even though those, those potential dangers exist, God put the accounts in numerous places in the New Testament Uh, God went to to great lengths to teach his people, that's me and you, about the ongoing reality of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And those gifts of the Holy Spirit, when used properly and when used biblically, they give us the power to be overcomers and to be victorious. They are powerful spiritual tools that we can use to defeat the power of darkness, and to win people to Jesus Christ. And that is God's optimum goal. So, I believe that by listening to today's program, there's people that you know that need to hear today's message because they are trying to sort all this out, and they need to sort it out biblically. And uh, it's our prayer that this program will teach them from the Bible how to... um, Um, utilize the gifts of the Holy Spirit and do it in a biblical manner. And you can do that by going to uh, paulmcguire.us. That's paulmcguire.us. Send them a link of the program. And I also want to add we have another Paradise Mountain Church meeting coming up in October in the next couple of weeks. Uh, We'll have the date posted for you. The time will be 6 p.m. It will be held at the Sportsman's Lodge in Studio City. Again, the meeting, the Paradise Mountain Church meetings are free, um, and the parking is free, but you need to go to paulmcguire.us, that's paulmcguire.us, to register, even though the, the meeting is free and the parking is free. You are listening to the Paul McGuire Report. I'm Paul McGuire. Um, we're talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Many people in the body of Christ, who I respect, have different theological opinions as to whether or not the gifts are for today. Um, I believe the gifts of the Holy Spirit are for today, but I believe that these gifts of the Holy Spirit should only be taught and used within the parameters that the Scripture gives us, or the rules and guidelines that the Scripture gives us, and that, as I said earlier regarding the gift of prophecy, you know, the, 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 the gift of prophecy referred to in the New Testament is entirely different 
than uh, being called to be a prophet of God in the Old Testament. Now, the passage that we were reading in the New Testament refers to um, a gift of uh, wisdom or a word of wisdom and a word of knowledge. And it's important to understand the difference. And by the way, a word of knowledge and a word of wisdom is not necessarily a prophetic gift. So a word of knowledge and a word of wisdom is not the same thing as God giving you a prophetic word from someone. And this is important to understand. Um, How we know the difference between a word of wisdom and a word of knowledge is that, first of all, we have to understand that there is a definite and distinct difference between a word of wisdom and a word of knowledge. They are not similar kinds of gifts. There is a distinct difference between the two of them, just as there is a difference between, let's say, knowledge and wisdom. Knowledge and wisdom, by the way, are two entirely different things. Knowledge is often the understanding or the accumulation of facts, principles, history, uh, information, while uh, wisdom is the ability to use the facts that knowledge brings you. Now, we've all met people who've had a whole lot of knowledge, a whole lot of head knowledge, but they have no ability to, to uh, take this head knowledge or, or um, information that they have, and they can't apply it to the basics of life. So they don't really have uh, uh, practical wisdom. So we need to remember there's a difference between knowledge and wisdom. Now, uh, another thing that we need to know is that th- what is called a word of knowledge and a word of wisdom are two different things. So, for example, um, you don't need a word of wisdom. You need a, uh, a, a understanding or knowledge of certain things in life and nature. Okay? So, if you, if you have ever been... A- <laughs> around a skunk, and coming from New York City, I haven't been around a whole lot of skunks, but I've been around enough skunks to know that when they uh, leak their their perfume, it's deadly. And so I've been in a car, usually outside the city, and I've seen a skunk uh, run across the road, or I've seen a skunk in, in the area of the car. And I remember when my kids were little, I would tell the kids to jump in the car and slam the doors and roll up the windows as fast as possible, and we would drive away as fast as possible. Okay, that comes from knowledge. That comes from uh, knowledge of what a skunk looks like and what a skunk can do in terms of the, the horrible odor that it leaves. Okay, so... Um, A word of knowledge could be, uh, supernaturally, God is telling me there is a skunk in the area, and therefore I'm aware of what a skunk can do. That could be a word of knowledge, or I physically see a skunk. But now, a word of wisdom, uh, if somebody gives me a word of wisdom, um, that is a specific... uh, instruction from the Lord about how to properly use the facts that there's a skunk in the area. So that means avoiding scaring the skunk when you're driving, driving off slowly, avoiding uh, startling the skunk. Make sure your kids quietly and without panic get into the car, shut the doors and roll up their windows, and slowly driving off. Because as anybody knows, when a skunk releases its odor, it can penetrate a car easily. So, sometimes God will bring people into your life, or he may speak to your own heart, 
and you will get a what's called a word of knowledge. Now, different believers have different levels of spiritual development, so not all believers are aware of the fact that they're giving you a word of knowledge, but they are. And then some believers will give you a word of wisdom, like what to do. Let me illustrate it this way. Um, and sometimes there's a blending with these spiritual gifts between the natural, the supernatural, and then practical wisdom. Let's say you work for some kind of company. And, it's, and let's say there's some believers in Christ who are mature. And let's say they have knowledge that there are going to be layoffs. Or that knowledge that the company you work for is that they're going to have layoffs may not have been publicly announced. And this isn't paranoia, but let's say two or three of the people that you know are walking with the Lord, um, share with you. Maybe you have a Bible study together. That's why it's important to meet with other believers. And you have a Bible study together, and one or two of the people say, you know, I, I feel this heaviness in my spirit. And again, it's not paranoia. Uh, but And then they express concern, and they say, I don't have any real physical evidence to, to express this concern, but I... I keep getting a word in my spirit about uh, layoffs and the possibility of layoffs coming. Well, why is God doing that? God is not doing that to, to, to supernaturally scare you. God is giving you supernatural advanced information so that you and these other believers can p- pray for supernatural protection of your jobs or that the Lord would open doors uh, supernaturally for you to find uh, just as good of a job, if not better, uh, a better job somewhere else. So the God is supernaturally giving you advanced knowledge. And then to compound it, if as, uh, you're, if, as you're praying, the Lord puts it on the heart of, of one of the believers or yourself or whatever, the name of a competitor, a competing company, and, and a sense, a really strong sense from the Spirit of God that you need to contact this company uh, and, and, you, and, and you all have a piece about it and you have this sense of expectation that the Lord wants you to do that. Now you're seeing two things functioning in kind of like a, synchron, a, a synchronization. The two things are this. You have... Um, um, Words of knowledge are being given about potential layoffs, and you have words of wisdom being given about contacting a particular company. Now, I have seen these things work in my life and in the lives of people I know who are believers in Jesus Christ. These very type of things, and God gives them as gifts to protect us. Um... Many times in my early career, when I was supporting my ministry through various jobs, and in my wife's career, and she spent many years as a teacher, there would be times when supernaturally, uh, I remember my wife one morning, this is when I was a Hollywood feature film producer, living in the Hollywood Hills, but but the company that we had, had shut down, and she had a, a career in the entertainment business also at the time. But she was woken up by the Lord in the middle of the night, and she was prompted to show up at a uh, hiring center, and uh, um, she got hired. Now, that was the Lord prompting her supernaturally with a word of knowledge. I have had situations where the Lord specifically said to me, you need to contact this company or this person, this is years ago, And I felt supernaturally a word of wisdom, the Lord telling me to do such and such. And as I obeyed him, he opened the door and gave me favor, and I had a new job when I needed it, and I didn't suffer the the problems of unemployment. So these gifts of the Holy Spirit are used by the Lord for ministry, for, for functioning in life, and they... The, the accuracy of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is totally dependent upon 
the maturity of our walk in the Lord. If we're not renewing our minds with the Word of God, if we're not growing in the Lord, then we um, it'll be like a Mad Hatter's Tea Party. Uh, we'll hear all these words that conflict and stuff. So these things are gifts from God if they are used properly. Now, when it comes to the issue of prophecy, um, there's a problem in the body of Christ. The word is used too loosely. First, the word is not accurately uh, described. When the, the, when in the Bible it talks about the gifts of the Holy Spirit and includes prophecy, that is a certain kind of prophecy. Usually that's an interpretation of, a prophetic word for somebody, normally that prophetic word is general in nature. And let me repeat that. Um, normally those prophetic words are general in nature. The Lord is encouraging someone. They're not uh, very specific in terms of, you know, Tuesday you're going to meet so-and-so and whatever. Uh, and the Lord uses that to motivate and encourage his people. I am always wary when I hear somebody who claims to be a prophet or a believer who um, claims to be operating in the prophetic gift of the Holy Spirit, and they're giving very detailed information as to what someone should do or not do. Like, the Lord is telling me to tell you not to marry this person, or to marry this person, or to quit your job, let's say, in Kansas City, and move to New Jersey or whatever. Um, I, um, the Holy Spirit in me always gets nervous about that, not, not because of unbelief, but because that's not normally how the Lord uh, gives people uh, a word of prophecy from a gift of the Holy Spirit. Usually a gift of prophecy is general in nature, and the, the more specific words of prophecy, if we are to get them, are given by men and women whose walk with the Lord is exemplary. They have a reputation for balance and maturity. And you're not supposed to be running around, by the way, uh, um, just accepting any, quote, word of the Lord somebody gives you because the Holy Spirit speaks to them. And I don't want to offend anybody listening, but as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, if somebody called into various ministries, and I know I'm not the only one who does this, I know many other people who do it, it's not a matter of pride, it's not a matter of arrogance. Sometimes people do have words for me, and I, I do want to be blessed by them. But I have to be very careful as a public minister, because what will happen at a Bible prophecy conference or whatever um, the evil one can send somebody to me and they may be not necessarily evil, they're just a baby Christian, they have no discernment, but the evil one will exploit their biblical immaturity and they'll give me a word that messes with my head or keeps me from speaking the message that God's given me or sows confusion, or attempts to sow error in my life. So, you know, it's not that I'm better than anybody else, but anybody in public ministry knows exactly what I'm talking about. You have to be very, very careful, because you don't know anything about the walk, the maturity, and the track record of, of, of people who have a word for you. So most often, I don't receive the word. I try to be as gracious and as polite as I can, but as a rule, I don't receive it. I don't even want to hear it. And, and uh, it's not because I don't have a teachable attitude. I do. Now, sometimes people will come up, and, and you can't block them. You're trying to be polite, and they'll give a general word. And usually, by the way, when the word is general, it's usually a safe word. And it's an encouraging word. It's an encouraging word of prophecy, and the Holy Spirit is all over it. And you, and and you feel built up uh, after somebody gives you a word. Now, those kinds of words. It's not that I'm just looking for positive words. That person was sent by God. 
Because, you see, God will not send you a stranger most often when you're in the ministry to give you a word that's very detailed. And remember, we're in a spiritual battle. So there are demons, there are, there are um, uh, principalities and powers, and the servant of God, whether that servant is male and female, you need to walk with the Lord. And when you walk with the Lord long enough, it doesn't mean you're invincible. We all know that. But it means that you're accustomed to hearing his voice. And it also means you're accustomed to hearing the enemy's voice, and you shut the door on that. I hope I said that clearly. So, it's important to know that there are differences between a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom, and the, the, the gift of the Holy Spirit we call prophecy. Now, let's remember something. A word of knowledge and a word of wisdom is not the same thing as a prophetic word. Now, sometimes um, you have to be careful, but a believer will come up to you and they'll give you a prophetic word. Usually I'm very careful unless I know them or, you know, know somebody who knows them. And but many times I've been blessed by people's prophetic words. But I have to be careful because, you know, I have people who are in the occult and witchcraft that come up to me who, who infiltrate Christian meetings, and they, they will attempt, if they can, uh, to come as a wolf in sheep's clothing and uh, release something uh, of the evil one in me. Not, 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 not release something of the evil one in me, release something of the evil one in my life because they're carrying a demonic spirit. Now, I don't want to get too heavy here, but when you're walking in the power of the Holy Spirit by grace and you're praying by grace and you're renewing your mind by grace, and this is available to every believer, not just teachers and leaders in the body of Christ. You walk under an anointing in the Holy Spirit where God supernaturally gives you the ability to discern the spirits. And therefore, you can look at somebody often, you can look in their countenance, you can look in their eyes, and the Lord will often tell you before they speak a word who they are, in the spiritual realm, whether they're one of God's people, whether they're into witchcraft or the occult, um, where where are are they somewhere in between? This happens to to me and many other people all the time. You know, someone will be you know, you know I don't know a hundred yards away. They're walking towards me, and uh, they don't have to say a word. Uh, they they don't realize it that when you're walking in the power of the Holy Spirit, you're walking in the light, and they may think that they're hiding their agenda, but it's like God gives you x-ray vision, and you, uh, you can see into the invisible realm uh, of who is motivating them. Is it the evil one? Is it Satan? Or is it God? And this often is the trickiest and most demonic when the individual or individuals, male or female, that come up to you uh, with a word or whatever or who want to engage in a conversation. It becomes the trickiest when they come as if they were Christians and they know Bible verses and they carry Bibles and for all practical purposes they're acting and functioning as they were Christians. But the Lord has already warned you about them and you already have the discerning of spirits and even before they open their mouths you're on your guard because the Lord is saying there's something not right here. They're not right with the Lord and usually then they try to trap you in some kind of legalistic message or, or things like that. The point is, these gifts are a blessing, but there can be spiritual warfare regarding them, and we have to use them uh, as the Lord commands us to use them. Now, um, this becomes increasingly important in the last days, by the way. And we are now in the latter part of the last days. So, as I give you this message, I, I'm asking you to listen to the Lord, listen to the Holy Spirit, 
and then do whatever he tells you. And if the Lord is calling you to send this message to somebody who needs to hear it, then you need to obey the Lord and go to the archives at paulmcguire.us and send them this message or send it to multiple people because chances are you know people who are caught up in deception. And they're caught up in deception because they have not been trained in the Word of God. They have not grown in the Lord spiritually to the place that they can discern between uh, what is um, brought about by the Holy Spirit and demonic spirits. And this not, should not be a mystery. God wants us to be able to, to have the gift of discernment. And there's ways we can do that, which we're going to get into in just a moment. You're listening to the Paul McGuire Report on Paul McGuire. I believe these three books will help you. Well, actually five will help you. And you should take advantage of them because we're offering them at a very low price at paulmcguire.us. You need to read uh, Conquering the Matrix. It will answer the question, you know, are you personally or somebody is somebody you love or maybe in your generational past or cousin or something, uh, are you under the subtle influence of some kind of mind control or hypnotic programming? I'm talking about subtle, and you may not even realizing it, but it's impacting your life in a negative way. It's blocking you. You need to, to recognize, uh, you need to, to learn how to recognize that, and then how you can overcome that. And if you read Conquering the Matrix, it will tell you how to do that. Very important. Number two is get yourself a copy of Mass Awakening, especially as you turn on the television. You are seeing... Uh, playing right in front of our face, highly sophisticated operations of scientific mind control, persuasion, indoctrination, advertising, and social engineering going on in the media designed to, to uh, uh, raise up groups uh, for the purpose of destroying America as a Christian nation and for the purpose of destroying America as a constitutional nation with its unique freedoms and checks and balances. Make no mistake about it, there are people that planned 100, 200 years ago to take down America and merge it into a one-world government, a one-world religion, and a one-world economic system. I quote these experts word for word in their own writings where they come right out and say, Their plan is to destroy America and to merge it into a global government. Everything that you're seeing on television, for the most part, is at its root, it's part of this spiritual battle. But you weren't called to sit on your posterior in the last days. You were called to be informed and to know how to do something about it. And that book is called Mass Awakening. Another very important book is A Prophecy of the Future of America. That book, I explained the Illuminati music videos of Beyonce, Jay-Z, Madonna, Katy Perry, the uh, Aleister Crowley 666, the pyramid on the back of the U.S. dollar, the Illuminati symbols at the um, uh, giant international sporting events, the Olympics, and in so many other places, you need to be up to speed on what's happening because there there's some very heavy things going on right now um, behind the scenes in the physical realm. And God's people, first of all, need to be educated and informed. And these books do that, by the way. But you also must have spiritual discernment. I, 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 I would have to say not a day goes by right now where I don't have a sincere Bible-believing Christian coming up to me, asking me, what do I think of this person and that person? And they rattle off a bunch of names, and they mean well, of these, uh, let's call them alternative media spokespeople, or these leaders that they trust because they think they're conservative and Christian. And I can just tell you that, you know, from over 50 years of researching, and also walking with the Lord for over 50 years and renewing my mind in the Word of God, it helps to have solid research on people and groups. 
but it also helps to be able to listen to the Holy Spirit because people that are deceivers and who are in the business of deceiving people, they operate according to pre-established methodologies. In other words, they give consistent clues um, that reveals their nature, whether they're good and evil, and you need to be sharpened up. You need to be up to speed about it. Because, you know, as much as I want to help as many people as I can by answering these questions, you've got to answer those questions. People are going to come up to you, and whether this nation slides into totalitarianism and slavery and a dictatorship may largely have to do with which voices are we listening to. Because many voices are evil, but they come off as if they're uh, righteous and true. And so I would suggest those books. Also, I hear Christians talking and asking questions on Christian media all the time. You need to get yourself a copy of Trumpocalypse that I co-wrote with my uh, author, Troy Anderson, a Pulitzer Prize-nominated journalist. It deals with Bible prophecy, the role of Donald Trump. It answers all the questions about how the deep state is attacking him. It explains the historical origins of the deep state. It explains what their long-term plans are. Um, And there's no other book out there like it. I hear Christians ask these questions that, quite frankly, are embarrassing and ridiculous. They have no idea what they're talking about. And they're going to make decisions that are going to expedite the destruction of America because they have paid no price whatsoever to educate themselves. And uh, Trumpocalypse is a fast read. Uh, Many, many, many of the most respected Christian leaders in America have read Trumpocalypse. They've also read our other book that I wrote with Troy called the Babylon Code, which deals with secret societies in the deep state and how they're attempting to control America and the world. And there's no other book like it at all, period. There, there is none, zilch. Because not all, it talks about Bible prophecy, it talks about Trump, it talks about, uh, it answers all the questions that especially Christians and conservatives have about whether or not they should support Trump. Um, and how where Donald Trump really stands on uh, key issues. And also, uh, we have many exclusive uh, high-level interviews and access to many high-level sources in Trumpocalypse. Um, I had the privilege of inter- interviewing the pastor just 30 minutes after he was told by one of the highest-level Republican leaders in Washington, D.C., he, he told this pastor, uh, who told me, uh, and I included what the pastor said in the book, like a week before it went to press in Trumpocalypse, where he warned this pastor, who I happened to call 30 minutes after he warned the pastor, uh, that the deep state was plotting to remove Donald Trump from office And when the pastor asked him what he meant by remove Donald Trump from office, this pastor highly, excuse me, not pastor, this high-ranking political Republican um, who was speaking to this pastor um, said to the pastor that they're planning him to remove him as as if in impeachment or assassination. That's how serious it is. And so you can't allow the media to just You know, my messages are not partisan. They're really not. It's not about pro-Democrat, pro-Republican. It's about truth. It's about integrity. It's about um, um, doing what's right regarding all people, no matter what their racial, ethnic group is. And it's about preserving freedom for people, not taking it away. And we have some very... Uh, you know, God is not a Republican, God's not a Democrat, and there are evil people on both sides of the fence, but there are some really evil people uh, that you need to know who they are. They're like the puppet masters pulling the strings of the puppets, 
And they are the ones that are controlling America as we know it today. And unless God's people in America wake up, uh, begin to read their word, repent of their apathy and, and not believing in Bible prophecy, uh, unless God's people begin to repent, you see, I keep speaking out on this because the Lord has really dealt with me. This is the product of over 50 years of research on my part. But nowhere in the Bible does it say that God sends a biblical third great awakening or a biblical revival because the sinners in America repent for their sins first. That's not what the Bible teaches. And yet you have millions of Christians in America and across the world who truly believe falsely and without properly studying their Bibles, they falsely believe that there are certain sins, which admittedly are sins that are being done, but that, that is the sins of these people outside of the church that are, are, are demanding that God judge America. And so they're blaming people who are non-believers for their sins and saying, well, this is why God's going to judge America and why God can't do anything with America. Now, look, whether, whether you get the information from listening to the Paul McGuire Report, this radio program, or you get the information from Trumpocalypse or one of the other books or all of the books, you've got to get educated fast and you've got to spread this message far and wide. Because that is a satanic stronghold. That is a lie. Um, and it, will, it can be the very thing that the enemy will use, because Satan is the father of lies, to bring down the collapse of America and to destroy the church in America. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that the sinners, it's the responsibility of sinners and the responsibility, the responsibility of people who do not believe God to preach the gospel, to win souls for, for Christ, to bring in the last day soul harvest, to make disciples of all nations. Nowhere in the Old Testament and the New Testament do you see God giving the assignment to bring people to the Lord to non-believers and pagans. It never happens. In fact, God says the opposite. He says, judgment happens in the house of the Lord first. So the people who've been given the most truth and the most light, which are the children of God, whether they're true children of God in Judaism or true children of God in Christianity, we who have been given the truth of the Word of God, we are responsible to preach the gospel, to spread the light, to win souls to Jesus Christ. And if we allow sin and rebellion to take over our own camp, then God promises that he will curse our nation and judge our nation. That's exactly what it says. You're not going to hear that message in Christian churches because they have become apostate. Apostate is a theological term which simply means they have deserted or abandoned the truth of God's word. Again, God does not call non-believers and atheists and sinners to preach the gospel. That's why God very clearly says repentance or turning away from sin, begins in the house of the Lord, or the church. In Israel, it began in Israel. So, the way God looks at it, at, at all of this, is if we want righteous leaders in Washington, D.C., let's start with that. Then, we don't point the finger at Democrats and Republicans and get and yell at them and tell them how ungodly they are and why they're the source of all of our problems. No. We point the finger at ourselves and say, Lord, we're the ones who are hypocritical. We're the ones that are not living according to your words. We're the ones not standing up for righteousness. We're the ones that are not repenting over our sins. And when the Church of Jesus Christ in America takes ownership for the sins of America because judgment begins in the house of the Lord and when we begin to repent individually 
of our sins, and then as intercessors, we begin to repent of the sins of the church, then and only then does that permit God, who is holy and righteous, to send a biblical revival and a biblical great awakening into America and throughout the world, which will result in a last day's soul harvest before the return of the Lord that will bring in hundreds of millions of people into the kingdom of heaven. We're standing on the precipice of this happening right now. Now, I hope you heard my voice. This is the product of over 50 years or 45 years of research and study. This is what, I don't boast of visions, you know that. And I'm very careful. I could claim to have a lot of visions. I don't. Because I want to give anything I say that the Lord has done in my life, I want to put it under the highest level of accountability and scrutiny. And therefore, I only claim to have had one authentic biblical vision. And that was on July 4th, 2012, when I was sitting at my desk um, in our house with my wife. We were reminiscing our dating days in Manhattan, New York, at the Bicentennial, when uh, July 4th, 17, not 1776, that's when the nation was founded, <laughs> July 4th, 1976, my wife and I were dated, dating on Manhattan Island. All these giant ships and fireworks uh, were on display. And then uh, at the bicentennial of that, we were remembering our dating years. And then I felt, I said, honey, I feel led to pray uh, for America. So I sat at my desk, July 4th, 2012. And I began to repent of my sins privately and, and out loud. Okay, and uh, then as an intercessor, I lifted up the sins of the Church of Jesus Christ. As an as, as an intercessor, I prayed for the sins of the Church in America. And you can read about this in full detail in the book uh, Trumpocalypse. Um, all I know is. After I began repenting of my sins in the church, the sins of the church, I felt the power of God come down upon me, and my body and, and, and fingers were set on fire with the most intense heat I ever experienced in my entire life. It was so intense that I felt like I was literally burning up. Never had experienced anything like this before. The next thing I knew, I was looking down from planet or looking down from a satellite point of view on planet earth and uh, I saw pockets of revival begin to break out starting primarily in the west coast and moving slowly from the west coast to the east coast and then to the north and south of the United States of America as if I was looking down on America from a satellite point of view and I heard the voice of the Lord in my head saying Paul they're starting to rise they're starting to rise in prayer. And what I saw was men and women of God repenting also and rising in prayer. And as they repented and, ro and rose in prayer, the glory of the Lord, representing a biblical revival, began being poured out upon them. And I began to see pockets of glory and revival spread across the United States. Now I'm shortening this. The next thing I knew, I was sitting back in my chair and I relayed this to my wife. Now, I didn't go away from... This was the only 100% vision I've ever had in my life. I didn't go from that event saying, absolutely, 100%, God is going to send a revival in America. I went away from that event with the sober reminder that if God's people repent of our sins first... God promises to send biblical revival and a biblical third great awakening. But judgment begins in the house of the Lord, and we must repent first. So the choice is ours. Everything you see happening in Washington, D.C., and the chaos, that is a physical manifestation of a great spiritual war that is raging in the invisible realm right now. So I want you to know as clearly as I can express this, the Holy Spirit is calling you right now to join 
the Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is calling you to preach the gospel, to be an intercessor who's willing to repent of your sins and the sins of the body of Christ. And the Holy Spirit is calling you to go into all the world and preach the gospel, to make disciples of all nations, and do what we're supposed to do immediately before the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, because Bible prophecy is being unfolded like it's never been unfolded before. That's our job. That's the purpose of Paul McGuire Ministries. We are using every media at our disposal to communicate this message, um, educate people in America and around the world, That means books, feature films, television programs, uh, social media, the Internet. By the grace of the Lord, and I want to be careful about what I say, but by the grace of the Lord, uh, our book, Trumpocalypse, which contains about American history, it talks about the deep state, it talks about the spiritual battle, that I wrote and my co-author Troy Anderson wrote. This is these books have been hand delivered by the highest level people in Washington D.C. They've been hand given to the president, the vice president Mike Pence, Dr. Benjamin Carton, uh, Dr. Ben Carson, our Lita King, uh, Senator Brownback, and and every major major Christian leader, and many major uh, Christian. Uh, um, and conservative political leaders. And they understand the significance of what we wrote. So God is using our humble attempts to influence the leaders of this world and this nation. Now, my job, like your job, is to obedient, be obedient to the call the Lord has given me. We're moving forward very aggressively, aggressively with our television program. We're launching that soon. We already have up like 120 uh, TV programs on Roku. We have our own Roku channel. Um, And so we're moving forward on many fronts because we are approaching a zone of very intense spiritual conflict in the very near immediate, immediate future. And our response is we must be able to discern the spirits. I hear a lot of Christians being seduced by, you know, the announcement of this person and that person and this group and that group. And I can just tell you that in the Lord, my spirit does not bear witness that all these people are who they say that they are. And we need to be discerning because God has given us a gift of our nation and he would like to see Uh, this nation preserved in its freedom. And you play, and I play, an important role in that. So I'm asking you to join me, Paul McGuire. Visit paulmcguire.us. Send this program to people who need to hear it. Number two is, I thank God for all of you that choose to be intercessory prayer warriors. Without your prayers, we would accomplish nothing. I know you're praying for me, my family, the ministry. And because I see the fruits of your prayer. How, how did the book get into the hands of the President of the United States and other things? Because people are praying. It's a miracle. Um, we, we are able to send our message all over the world because people are praying and act, acting. And I thank God for those of you that uh, just radically go before the Lord and you ask God what you can do in terms of your financial gifts and your donations and contributions, and you just do what God tells you to do. And I thank God for you, uh, because you're making this possible. We are in intense spiritual warfare. No, I'm not complaining about it, because that's what I'm doing. The reason we're in warfare is because we're taking territory. When you don't take territory, you have no warfare. But we're taking territory in the Lord, and it's the right kind of territory. So join us, and I I think it's more accurate to say not join us, join what the Lord is doing in and through us, and respond to the call of the Holy Spirit that's on your life now. If you feel led to to respond to the call somewhere else, well, just make sure it's biblical. Obey the call of God on your life. 
Uh, these are the best of times and the worst of times, but God is going to do great exploits through his people. Um, God is going to raise many of you up, and he's going to raise your children up. This battle is not over till it's over, my friends. So together, we have won the victory, and uh, we can't back down now. So visit paulmcguire.us. That's paulmcguire.us. Um, we have an announcement regarding television coming out soon. Uh, we have a number of announcements that I'll be making soon. I always have to be careful about making the announcements. And then, of course, join us every, uh, you know, in the next couple of weeks, we have another Paradise Mountain Church meeting at the, uh, at the hotel in Studio City uh, at the Sportsman's Lodge. Uh, people flew in from Texas, and they drove for hours to come, as they do for every meeting. The power of God really came down uh, with, with force, tenderness, love, and deliverance. The Holy Spirit came down in a very unusual way, and people were delivered profoundly and set free. No nuttiness, no craziness, just freedom in Jesus Christ. So God bless you. This is your brother in Jesus Christ. Remember, together we can take the land. That's why God put us here. God bless you. Never, never lose heart. With God, all things are possible. Amen. Your brother in Christ, Paul McGuire, visit paulmcguire.us. And by the way, get yourself a copy of Trumpocalypse and Conquering the Matrix and read it. Take notes and then share it with somebody and then make sure they give it back to you and, and then they can share it. Okay? Meanwhile, I have thousands of hours of uh, free radio programming, thousands of articles of free radio articles, conferences for free. You can watch hundreds of hours, who, I don't even know how many hours now, of broadcast quality television on our Roku channel called Paul McGuire Ministries. Spread the word on that. By the way, um, this is my fault, I'm sorry, but... Um, we have uh, two Facebook pages. The first one started out as a private one because I really wasn't paying attention. But they max out at 5,000 members. So at 5,000 members, they start stop taking friends. Well, I don't want to stop taking friends. Remember, go to the Paul McGuire public figure um, Facebook site and you can join. Uh, it's un- It'll hold unlimited numbers. And... Uh, You'll be able to get information and the latest stuff that's happening. God bless you. This is Paul McGuire. Paul McGuire.